This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. And here are some of the latest updates on how the industry is dealing with the coronavirus crisis. In China, production is starting to ramp up again. Forcia, the French supplier, says it expects to be at full production in China next month. In Europe, Audi says it will start to crank up its assembly lines by the end of this month, but production will ramp up slowly and many line workers will be in masks and will maintain social distancing on the line. In the U.S., General Motors and Ford are scrambling to try to line up more cash. GM added a nearly $2 billion credit line from several banks. Ford raised $8 billion in new corporate debt. You know, in normal times, major automakers spend about $2 billion a week. And while they've all slashed spending to the bone, they're still burning through a lot of money. Unless they can get production going again soon, they're all going to be in deep trouble. And that may be why the U.S. government just added car sales to the list of essential services. Specifically, the Department of Homeland Security announced that it would classify workers critical to the manufacturing, distribution, sales, rental, leasing, repair and maintenance of vehicles, and other transportation equipment including electric vehicle charging stations and the supply chains that enable these operations as essential workers. Meanwhile, Wards is forecasting that the April SAR in the U.S. will only come in at between 7 and 8 million vehicles. And it expects the inventory of cars and trucks parked on dealers' lots to hit between 130 and 150 days supply. It says fleet sales to daily rental companies have been decimated and the car companies that rely on them will be especially hurt. But commercial fleet sales are the one segment that is faring the best. And those are sales to police, fire, government, and other kinds of essential services. Elon Musk just dropped a few golden nuggets of details about the Cybertruck. He says they're working on increasing dynamic air suspension travel for better off-roading. Needs to kick butt in Baja. Sounds like Musk wants to go after the enthusiast that would look at the F-150 Raptor or Colorado ZR2. Elon also tweeted that they reduced the size of the Cybertruck about 3% compared to the prototype version and that resulted in a more level center line and lower window sill. Tesla starts to plan delivering the Cybertruck later next year. Back in 2015, Tesla showed off this automatic electric vehicle charger that kind of looks like a robotic snake. And now Chinese EV startup iWays has been granted patents in Europe and China for its own autonomous charger called Carl. It's available in both 30 kilowatt and 60 kilowatt capacities and can recharge a vehicle to 80% in under 50 minutes. Instead of having to look for a charger, EV owners can summon Carl with a smartphone app. It will use GPS to locate the vehicle, plug in, and start charging automatically. Once it's finished, it will move to the next vehicle or return to its base station. Last week, Cadillac announced it's working on high-performance versions of the CT4V and CT5V. But could a station wagon, a high-performance wagon, also be part of Cadillac's lineup? On last week's AutoLine After Hours, we were joined by Brandon Vivian, the executive chief engineer at Cadillac, and here's what his response was to that question. So I will tell you, I've been looking at that many, many, many times um, in we, we continue to look for opportunities to make to make money, and I will continue to do that. So uh, nothing nothing to announce right now, but you know certainly when you you see the enthusiasm of our customers and, and when I'm out there talking to the co- you know our customers and, and you know our V lab members or uh, uh, our V club members, there, there is an absolute fanaticism around uh, the V wagons and the wagons in general. and so uh, you know, because of that, we continue to, to, to study, you know, a future variant. Ooh, great question, Scott. Thanks for s- sending that in. You can watch that entire show right now on our website or our YouTube channel. 
About 90% of Porsche 911s are custom ordered. And now Porsche is showing off a new kind of interior that you can also custom order. The contrasting two-tone look adds quilted panels in the seats and doors and decorative seams stitched in the opposing color. We think the floor mats really pop out. There are four color combinations that can be ordered right now, but Porsche says it's going to add even more. Another virtual racing series is kicking off, but this one's different from the others. Skoda's new eSport series is a rally racing challenge where regular fans will get the chance to go head-to-head -head against their favorite professional drivers. Users will race in virtual Skoda Fabia Rally 2 Evos. Individual results will be put into a ranking system, and there will be prizes for the winners. The competition lasts for five days and kicks off this Wednesday with Rally Argentina. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. The Citroen DS is already considered one of the most beautiful cars ever designed in the world, but we really love this custom version. Two designers wondered what a factory version of a Chapron convertible might look like, but since so many people were already restoring convertibles, they decided to do something Citroen had never done with the DS, make a two-door coupe. We recently devoted an Auto Line After Hours to the Chaperon convertible, and we'll throw up a link for that. To keep the design more in line with the original, the designers kept the curved back window and rounded contours at the rear. And it really is amazing how this looks like it could have rolled off the assembly line. The hardtop flows seamlessly into the overall shape, and the pillarless daylight opening, or DLO, looks just right. Like the exterior, the interior had a few things that were moved around, and like the exterior, it is absolutely gorgeous. The project took five years and 11,000 man-hours to complete. Honda is going to expand its battery recycling in Europe. It's partnered with waste management company SNAM to recycle its hybrid and EV batteries. They'll either be used in Second Life energy storage units, or if the batteries aren't suitable for that, raw materials will be extracted from them using a new hydrometallurgy process. The materials can be reused in the production of new batteries, color pigments, or as additives for mortar. Honda's car dealers in Europe can arrange for batteries to be recycled through SNAM's dedicated online platform, who will then decide what to do with the batteries. India was once ruled by the British Crown, but now India is starting to buy up some of Britain's most famous brands. We all know about Tata and Jaguar Land Rover, and now Reuters reports that TVS, India's third largest motorcycle maker, sealed the deal to buy Norton Motorcycles for only $20 million. Norton is 122 years old, but the company was in financial distress. Two weeks ago, we put a button on our website asking for donations. Our business model is to give you free information about the auto industry and pay our bills with advertising from automotive suppliers. But with the virus crisis, all that advertising support dried up. And we have to thank all of you who have stepped up and donated to help keep AutoLine going while the auto industry is shut down. A lot of you sent comments along with your donations and you cannot believe how encouraging that is for our morale. Here's a sample of some of them. Brian Gebby says, Autoline, the show must go on. Stephen Grupinski says, there is nothing else like it, and it is at the top of my podcast feed. Mustafa Barakat says, love Autoline, keep up the great work. Fred Love, you make me smile and you make me smarter. David Rasmussen, glad to help. Best wishes to the entire crew. Grayson Willis, I've been watching you guys for so long, kind of feels like we're family. Igor Motko, I really find useful all the latest info and discussions about the auto industry. I hope that this donation will help your work. Best regards from Slovenia. Slovenia. Charles Orva says, thanks for mentioning me on After Hours. And of course, he's the one that asked that question about the Cadillac station wagon. Jeremy Renton says, I'm not in the car industry, but I've enjoyed your material for years. Venkata Pavan Raja, after coming to the U.S. as a student, I learned a lot about the auto industry through your programs. Aaron Berger, 
love the EV coverage down with COVID-19. Alexander Karabitsis, I probably know more about the auto industry than the majority of 21-year-olds, and this wouldn't be possible without the content that you put out. Keep it up. William Rutledge says, being a Detroit boy and working my way through college, working in the steel division during summer break, I feel a kinship with many of the people involved in the industry. And William, I got to tell you something. When I was a college student, I worked my way through school working in the steel plant at the Ford Rue, so we've got a kinship there, brother. Tyler Joswick says, I've been a daily fan for over seven years now. Alan Buck, you guys rock and hate to the ad revenue drying up. Hope this little bit helps. James Anderson, sorry I cannot contribute more, but it seems like times are hard. James, don't worry about it. Every little bit helps. Brian Smith says, enjoy your website and Autoline After Hours in particular. And finally, I look forward each day to your Autoline presentation. Patrick McMichael from Hot Springs, Arkansas. You know, it's kind of unfair to just list these names because so many more have come in and we want to thank all of you who have donated. And with that, we wrap up today's show. Thank you for making Autoline Daily a part of your day.